Tune to 93.1 Real FM, The People's Choice. It's 10 hours 31. We're standing by for our conversation with our friends from Childlink Guyana. And today uh, we are just awaiting that link with our guests um, who will be, I'm sure, joining us momentarily. So do stay tuned. It is 10 hours 31. And today we'll be talking about juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. I think it's an appropriate discussion as we get ready for Father's Day observances and celebrations coming up on Sunday. This is 93.1 Real FM, The People's Choice. It is 10 hours 34. And welcome to our discussion with Childlink Guyana. And my guest today is the communications officer at Childlink, Mr. Milton Granham. And today uh, he's joined by Shamar Galloway, who is a teacher at Queen's College. Our topic is juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. And I say welcome to both gentlemen. Good morning, uh, Milton and Shamar. Welcome. Good morning, and thank you, Morano. Thank you for having us. Wonderful. Well, Good morning. I'm, I'm going well. to... And it's a pleasure to be here. Great. That's Shamar. I'm going to hand it over to Milton, first of all, to give our listeners a brief background as to what Childlink Guyana is and what is it that they do. And, of course, tell us a little bit about the ongoing program. I think it's called DRIVE, and then we'll get into that discussion about juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. Um, Milton, take it away. All right, thank you, Morano, and good morning to the listeners. So, at Child Link, as the listeners would know, we're committed to a Guyanese society where every child has the right to grow up in a safe and secure family and community. And as you mentioned, with our DRIVE program, DRIVE, the acronym stands for Diversion, Reintegration, Interventions, Vital for Empowerment. And with DRIVE, we're aiming to implement or have youths divert from juvenile delinquency so we're setting up programs to have them be more involved in community activities more schooling activities and 
things that would help them to be and lead positive lives rather than to going down the path of juvenile delinquency. All right. Tell us about, um, well, Shamar is going to um, tell us about what it is that he does. But let's talk about the link now between Chad Link and, and what Shamar is doing. All right. So Shamar is here as a guest because he works as a teacher mm -hmm. and juveniles are children. So mm -hmm. teachers would be in contact with juveniles and we're looking at juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. So a male was specifically chosen mm -hmm. because fathers is right around the corner. So we wanted to link juvenile delinquency with fatherhood for people to see that positive fatherhood and positive father role models would impact juveniles life in a positive way, helping them to divert from delinquent behaviors. So Shamar would today enlighten us as to how teachers can play a role in helping students or if you want to speak from a male perspective as an aspiring father, mm -hmm. as to how youths can be diverted from delinquent behaviors. That is awesome news indeed. All right, great. Thank you for that, Milton. And at this point, we're going to invite Shamar now. Uh, Shamar Galloway, he's a teacher at Queen's College and he's a final year student at the Cyril Potter College of Education. Shamar, briefly, tell us what, um, what is your experience like um, so far? Um, how long you've been um, in teaching or educating? As, as I, I noticed, the, they're changing the terms now. So tell us a little bit about that and then we'll talk about juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. All right, so good morning once again um, to my colleagues here and the listeners. So I just want to reiterate that it's a pleasure to be here having this discussion. And really, um, I've been, okay, so I'll start by listing how many years I've been an educator. So I am approaching my fourth year being an educator come January 26th of next year. Mm -hmm. So that's a milestone for me. And it's been a really great experience. It's given me so much perspective. Um, truly, as an educator, when you interact with uh, you know, a plethora of different personalities in a classroom, it really develops your understanding of diversity. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that. well, that's experience that I cherish greatly. Um, additionally, um, what I want to um, share as it relates to the topic is to first and foremost identify a clear definition of what we're talking about so that everyone is on par with what you know the conversation about so we're, we're saying that we're talking about juvenile delinquency but that's going to be what the conversation is premised on mm -hmm. so basically let's just understand that this refers to any form of legal act or behavior that is committed by individuals who are considered to be minors or just below the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So Illegal. establishing that, I think we can go forward um, clear as to what we're discussing. Wonderful. All right. Illegal. <laughs> I thought I, I, yeah. I'm sure I heard it legal just now. <laughs> illegal. <My bad>. Illegal. <laughs> yes. All right. That's okay. Um, that's okay. Um, thank you so much for reminding us of the definition of juvenile delinquency. So let's get into it now and talk about um, how does the absence of a father figure impact um, a young person's likelihood of engaging in delinquent behavior, the illegal uh, behavior by juveniles. How does the absence of that father figure, um, you know, have that sort of impact? All right. Um, great question. And to begin, I, I, I would like to describe briefly what um, a father is or what, or what the masculine archetype is supposed to be. So usually when we when we talk about masculinity or we're discussing the masculine archetype it's it's usually associated with qualities like having discipline um having drive uh things along the lines of purpose and so forth um even though it's typically associated with masculinity we know it's not exclusive to masculinity but it's it, there's a reason why it's associated with masculinity very often so going from there um that gives us a clear understanding that where there is an absence of the male archetype and, and to be specific, positive male archetypes or positive male role models, we, we create this, um, we create sort of space for other um, elements to arise. And 
as we as we're discussing, those are what we're gonna consider to be our juvenile delinquent acts or illegal or illegal acts. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really important that we have that positive uh, male role model present in um, households, and particularly for boys, mm -hmm. um, it's it's really important that a positive male role model is there because we do learn by observation. Mm -hmm. The human brain it's like a sponge, and even though um, you so so it's very important that the things that you want young boys to emulate as they grow older you you expose them to it and of course you need to do that by having the positive role models so definitely fathers are important and on this note i want to say it, that you do not need to be a biological father to be a father <laughs> i think as as men um, in general we have the, the the ability to function in that capacity as fathers once that we have once that we have the drive and desire to pick up the mantle basically mm -hmm. so you don't have to be a biological father to function as a father for the lives of you know some male or multiple yeah well i like that you mentioned um positive role model uh, or being a positive role model so uh, let's talk about um the role that this positive fatherhood plays in preventing juvenile delinquency. What what role does that really play? All right, I can take this one. I can take this one. Thank so, you. Go ahead, Milton. Like you, like you mentioned, I'm glad that Shamar mentioned positive because positive fatherhood can help a child in so many ways. Positive fatherhood can contribute to providing emotional support for children, as in. A father being present in a child's life would help that child to know that there is a parent present that they can talk to. Also, I want to mention that a father or a parent in general, being open to listening to their child is important because your child must feel the need to come and tell you anything or whatever is happening in their life. So that is also one form of positive fatherhood. Positive fatherhood also helps with guidance and stability in a child's life. Because as we would say, a child is more so females are connected to their fathers. So a female being connected to her father now would allow her to, let's say, for instance, look at her father, of course, a positive role model and identify what she might want in her husband in the future. So that's another way positive fatherhood might contribute in preventing juvenile delinquency. All right, let's talk now um, about whether or not there are specific strategies or programs that effectively engage fathers in the lives of at-risk youth to deter delinquent behavior. Um, you know, because we there might be things happening um, to, to stem this, uh, but we might not be aware of it. So are there specific strategies or programs? So to my knowledge, I am unaware of programs that are functioning mm -hmm. um, to address that issue. Of course, that is, well, based on what I know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Milton, you can contribute to this um, because I'm relatively new to the whole realm of advocacy and so forth. So I'm still learning a lot and identifying the various organizations and institutions that we have that are functioning to promote social harmony. Mm -hmm. um, but based on my knowledge, I'm not too afraid with organizations that are directly focused on that. I know that there are organizations that focus on the holistic um, maintenance and upkeeping of social harmony and so forth. Perfect example, RCC, Rise for Child Commission. I have had the privilege to volunteer with them. And I know that they participate in a series of um, initiatives where they focus on spreading awareness on issues facing children, um, on sensitizing parents on how they can be better in their parenting strategies and so forth but um, apart from that whether they're when it comes to the programs directly for building the positive male role models now that's something i i'm, I'm unaware of hmm. milton that's fine mm -hmm. there are some programs and there are some ways father fathers can help in helping their children prevent juvenile delinquency. Some programs would include things like counseling. Mm -hmm. Counseling is offered through many institutions in Guyana. For example, Child Link, we help with helping families and so on. 
there is things like fathers mentoring like there is the big brother programs that we've adopted where uh, an elderly person or an older person in the community might adopt a small child and mentor that child as they go along life so things like counseling mentoring and just generally fathers being involved in their children's life can help them prevent juvenile delinquency Okay, let's talk about communication now, and we can discuss how is it that how can fathers effectively communicate with their children to build strong relationships and at the same time discourage involvement in delinquent activities. And and I do believe that our, um, for many people in our society, you know, we find it a bit difficult to. Um, chat with our fathers and most of the most of the discussions might be with mom so how can fathers begin to effectively communicate with their children sure thank you for that question Murano. so fathers can communicate with their children through various means but one thing that i would say is really important is actively listening mm -hmm. listening to your child being open so that your child don't feel the need to keep anything from you. And once you create that bond and that relationship with your child, then it makes their life easier. And it makes your life easy as a father because you're now able to assist your child with, with whatever issues they might be having. Let's say they had a hard day at school. Something happened at school. They were bullied at school or something. Mm -hmm. And you're open to listening to them, whether it be a male or a female. Because I know sometimes if a male is bullied at school, you know, he might be scared to tell his dad because he might not see man enough. But if you have that open relationship with your child and have your child feel open to telling you whatever, then you can now help them navigate that situation. Mm -hmm. And navigating that situation can mean you can go to the school and talk to the teacher. You can have counseling for your child because bullying is something really that can really scar a child's life. So you can go to the school, talk to the the teacher and help resolve that issue so actively listening would lead to that and another way they can do that is providing support through actively listening also but just being there for your child they might have a game attend that game with them build bonds and do things with them so that they feel wanted and they feel like yeah you're my dad and you're being there for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right well thank you so much um you want to add anything to that shamar is, or, or was it Shamar? That was Milton, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, Milton, Milton just spoke. So, yeah, I would actually, I'm, I'm, thank you for the opportunity to share because I do want to add to that. Milton shared two really great um, strategies and advice there. Um, but what I want to just highlight a bit is um, no one can pour from an empty cup. Mm. So, I'm sure we've all heard of this before. And I am a fervent believer in. Um, regulating your internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. So I think if you are an intentional parent, you see what you do as something that has purpose. You value the role that you have as, and, and I, let, let's just in, encompass all parents, whether it's a mother or a father. And I think that one of the things that you should definitely be actively doing to, to build your capacity to handle um, you know, giving support because giving support is an emotionally draining thing. Um, trust me, I know um, doing it with children as an educator, it, it really is an emotionally draining thing. So you have to keep replenishing your cup to be able to do that. So I think it starts with, with, with of course, supplying yourself with a lot of positive information, um, positive self-talk, um, seeking knowledge to improve and so forth. And then when your cup is full, then you're going to be able to better pour into someone else. So it all starts within and then I think that will lead to optimal parenting. Mm -hmm. that, that is a very good point indeed. And straight away, uh, my mind uh, went to something, I think it was Oprah and Oprah Winfrey and Maya Angelou was discussing that you have to take care of yourself first before you can actually take care of others and don't neglect yourself. Don't give away too much of yourself so that you're left, um, you know, uh, well, not weak, but you're left without anything uh, to give back to people. So don't give too much away. That's a very interesting point to make indeed. Uh, let's now talk about some of the challenges, uh, common challenges that fathers face um, in maintaining 
a positive presence in their children's lives, particularly in at-risk communities. Uh, perhaps you can explain for our listeners what at-risk communities are, and then we'll talk about the challenges that fathers face in maintaining that presence in their children's lives. All right, thank you, Morano. So to begin the question with what at-risk communities are. So at-risk communities might be communities that have limited resources or they they don't have as much as some other people. Mm -hmm. So they're more at risk of being involved in delinquent behaviors. Mm -hmm. And to answer the question, as in what... Are the challenges? To answer the question, mm -hmm. the challenges, some challenges that at-risk communities and fathers being in those communities with children might be... A common one is... Here in Guyana, we have a lot of single parents, mm -hmm. more so single mothers. And most of the times, the fathers are not present because they might have to go out and look for jobs and they just don't get the time to be in the home guiding their children. So that's one challenge that they have to go look for jobs. And sometimes the jobs are really long hours. Sometimes they have to go in the interior and they just don't get to be there for their children. So that's one challenge at risk communities might face. All right, that's um, Milton there. Um, Shamar, any anything you'd like to add to that? Um, long long job, um, well, not long jobs, but jobs away from the home, keeping them long periods and uh, perhaps distances and so on. Is there anything else you uh, think that might be a common challenge that fathers might face, maintaining their uh, positive presence in children's lives? Um, certainly, yes. I would love to add to that. So just acknowledging that Milton once again shared uh, some really good points, but a really good um, point there. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving the discussion prompts so far. So one of the things that I definitely have observed being a major challenge to um, men in general who wish to, you know, stand up and be positive figures, it's, it's, it's a lack of empathy and compassion. Now, typically because of the perception surrounding masculinity is that you have it all together mm -hmm. or you're you're supposed to have it all together mm -hmm. so when persons see that you are you know you're working towards establishing the life that you want rarely do you find persons take the time to extend a grace and be like are you okay is there some way that i can help you or is there anything you know you need some assistance with and typically we find that in the cases where you know it's it, it's it's the reverse where you know it's women that are functioning those capacities i think that women tend to be recipients of a lot more grace and compassion from the broader society so i i believe that that poses a significant challenge because what we cannot um disregard is to be a positive role model to be well to try to be a good person it it is a taxing thing it's 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 in my opinion i see it as a duty so it it takes energy it takes investment and it's it's even more taxing and draining when you're doing so without any form of you know emotional support coming your way even if it is in the simple form of you know words of affirmations or just words of acknowledgement because the perception is you're supposed to have it all together no one has to stop and say thank you or say you're doing good mm -hmm. because you're a man you should have it all together already so i think that's something that on a commute well on a national level i think on a global level on a global level that work can be done on establishing better um, empathy and compassion for men in their pursuits to be more positive role models. Wonderful. Well, let's talk now. How does a supportive father figure contribute to a young person's sense of identity and self-worth, uh, reducing the likelihood of delinquent behavior? And I think um, somebody touched on it earlier when, when mentioning the impact that the father figure has on boys and girls and not necessarily just on boys. So how does that supportive father figure contribute to a young person's sense of identity and their self-worth um, and in doing so reduce the likelihood of delinquent behavior? All right, I can take this one, Murano. So uh, in doing this, a positive, a supportive, sorry, a supportive, sorry, father figure would influence their child 
and help them to divert from delinquent behaviors in many ways. Some of those would include, like I mentioned before, the example of a female looking at her positive father figure and identifying that this is what she might want in her husband. Another thing would be a father teaching their son life skills like fishing, swimming, and through these things, they also build bonds. Mm -hmm. So they can also teach them carpentry. Fixing if you're car. fixing something around the house, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can always have your son help you, let him pass you the tools or have him hammer a nail or something. So that's a life skill. And another thing would be if you're giving them guidance, as in what to look for in friends. So this can be called peer guidance, what to look for in friends and just telling them generally how to navigate life. You might not be able to teach them everything, but whatever you know, and all these can come through a supportive father figure. Wonderful. All right. So let's talk now about misconceptions. Misconceptions. Are there any misconceptions about the impact of fatherhood and juvenile delinquency that need to be addressed? What are things that people out there are thinking, some of the myths and so on? Well, I'd like to start um, on that one. So I think one of the common myths surrounding the whole correlation between uh, fatherhood and juvenile delinquencies, and I think this was already highlighted earlier on in the discussion, but just to reiterate, mm -hmm. um, a father being present isn't always an automatic win. Mm -hmm. All right, that, that, that's one thing. A, a, a parent being present in general isn't always an automatic win because as we identify, it's, it's what is important is having positive figures, positive role models. You can have a parental figure, but if that parental figure is toxic or all they do is they just pour negative um, ideas onto their children, then it, it, it honestly presents the opportunity for that child to partake in, I don't know, greater forms of juvenile delinquent acts mm -hmm. so not have so just having a father present is not enough to address the problem or to fix it or to help curb it whatever it's it's having positive role models okay. so that that's what i'd like to add there all right well we're coming down to um wrapping up time and so i'm going to give you i know we can go on and on and this is a discussion that we'll probably have to have another uh, part two uh, but as it's father's day coming up on sunday um we certainly are very happy that you know the conversation has started uh juvenile delinquency fatherhood myths and misconceptions um perhaps we can end off by um, words of advice as as young men what are some things uh, you would like fathers to understand and know and perhaps do to make life a little bit better for children and so on um, absent fathers fathers who are non-communicative and things like that what are some bits of advice you have as we get closer to father's day um, we'll take shamar first and milton will have the last word as we wrap it up this morning so um, I'm happy to be able to share well, 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 what I consider to be advice here. So the only thing that's um, reverberating in my mind right now is that what I would urge any um, parental figure, anyone who sits in that position of being a role model is to treat your position as a duty, see it as a responsibility. I think far too often, uh, in general, we as people, we, we see the hats that we wear as just, you know, these old average things. I know it's just another day, I'm a parent, I'm this and I'm that, and let me just get over with it. But really and truly, we need to operate with more intentionality in the things that we do. And I feel that once that you establish a strong sense of purpose in what you're doing, and it does take time. I, I must acknowledge that it takes time to build that level of intentionality, that level of purpose and so forth in the things that you do. But it's a worthwhile investment because the, the output from building intentionality and purpose within, it's, it's, it's greater than I think more than, than you can imagine basically. So work on establishing a sense of duty and obligation with regards to the hats that you hold. 
Thank you so much for that, Shamar. And um, Milton, you have the final word. Thank you, Morano. So piggybacking on what Shamar said, things take time. So to start with absent fathers, for those fathers who might be absent, just checking in on your child is important. Yeah, you might have to work somewhere else that you might not be able to be at home every day with your child, but just giving them a call, checking in, telling them you love them, and just being there for them when you can, and trying to make the time to be there for them also. It's really important. I'm sure they would really appreciate that. And for fathers who are there, present in their children's life and trying their best, kudos to you and keep doing that because that's really important for building your child. And to end off our discussion, I'd like to thank you for having us, Morano, to discuss fatherhood and juvenile delinquency. And as Father's Day is approaching, I'd like to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day on the behalf of myself and Chiling. Thank you so much. And I'd like to thank you, uh, Milton Granham. He's the Communications Officer at Child Link Incorporated. And Shamar Galloway, who is an educator at Queen's College and also a final year student at CPC, for being my guest today on this discussion on juvenile delinquency and fatherhood. It was a pleasure, gentlemen. And um, all the best to you. Um, I'm not sure if you're dads or, or fathers, but all the best to you for today and for the weekend as well. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. I am not Thank a dad you. just yet. <laughs> I, I, I'm not either. I'm too young for that. At least I like to think. <laughs> but it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure having you, gentlemen. Have a good day. Bye, boys. Bye. This is 93.1 Real FM with our trending headlines. I'm Marano Isaacs. Good morning. Over the last three years, there has been a significant influx of investors from Africa to the Caribbean. A development president, Dr. Irfan Ali, sees as having the potential to trigger massive transformation.